This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. For more information, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu. I think there were really two motivations. Uh, the first one was a lot of times uh, we spend a lot of time in the field of marketing look at individual level data. So building models that take into account what you might do, what I might do, etc. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of times that retailers, manufacturers, people actually making the decisions don't have that level of data. So wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to make statements about who to target with a particular promotion, coupon, price cut, et cetera, based on aggregate information. And so a more general way of thinking about that is what we would call data minimization, meaning even if you had all the individual level data, how much would you really benefit by it? And to be honest, the first time I heard about it was it was a talk at MIT by another researcher. I'm rarely inspired by other people's research, but I had heard someone else give a talk on this. And while I don't think their approach was right, it actually made me start to think about how to actually do inference with minimal data. I'm a cheapskate at heart. So I like doing a formal academic research. I like developing elaborate models, but I like to make them very, very practical. And that means two things. One, it means trying to uh, use easy software, trying to use Microsoft Excel instead of fancy software that you need to write computer code for. And second, it means trying to use as little data as possible. So after building some elaborate models using very detailed, extensive customer level databases, I wanted to answer both of those questions. Can we reduce the software requirements? And I have a paper that does that, and it's kind of fun and interesting. But can we reduce the data requirements? And the answer is, is shockingly yes that instead of having very detailed transactions about what each customer is doing at each moment in time, if you boil it all down to just a simple histogram, how many people bought from us once this year, twice, three times, and you show me a series of those histograms over time, very easy for companies to collect and store, no worries about privacy, you can build the same kinds of models with the same degree of accuracy as if you had the original raw data in the first place. Companies are afraid to get rid of the data for the same reason that we're unwilling to clean out our attics. They're thinking that there's going to be some value, that at some point, this piece of data, knowing this person's demographics or knowing that person's purchase history from 2004, is going to be of some value. And throwing it away means throwing away assets. That's a real problem for companies to do that. It turns out that, of course, there's a great cost to them to store the data, great risk in terms of information security. But there's also very little value for certain kinds of measures are, aren't valuable at all, even when they're fresh, and other kinds of measures really do get dated. And so it's important for companies to figure out what they need to keep, what they can get rid of, and to focus on uh, among the measures that really are timely and important, what to do with them. The data by itself isn't that useful unless you really know how to draw insights from it. And that sounds a bit like a trite statement. A lot of people saying that data is, is you can't turn it into knowledge and so on. Uh, and, but it's really true. And you have to know what kinds of models to build, what kinds of statistical assumptions to make, what kinds of equations you need to, to build around it. And there's a very nice interplay between having a certain amount of data and drawing certain kinds of inferences. You can't really address one of those issues without the other. And I think we've managed to strike a nice balance for the two. I'm not sure companies today know how to predict using the data very well. So the problem is they're just trying to keep everything in sight. It might turn out that they have the right measures today. It might turn out that what they want to do in the future changes. And so even if they had a perfectly predictive model, they're afraid that general customer behavior will change in the future. Therefore, the minute they throw something away, it's kind of gone forever. So I think part of that mentality is probably OK, but I think the thing that companies should always weigh off against is what is the cost of keeping all of this massive data? And you say it's not just the size of the server that someone has to build. It's not just the big staff that someone has to have to manage all of the data. It's building models on massively large data sets is problematic. It leads to companies having to hire expert statisticians, expert programmers. And it's not that I want to put myself out of a job. I think there is a lot of value for expert statisticians. But now, you not only have to be a statistician, you have to be a computer scientist to deal with these massive databases. And so they're essentially looking for people that have all of these skills when most of the data they collect really isn't as useful as they think. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at Wharton, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.